I was lost in the darkness, searching for something, searching for something. To be the love I was missing, but there was nothing, but there was nothing. And there in my searching, running in circles, and still feeling empty inside. You show me the love I was longing for all of my life. I just want to tell you You're perfect In all your ways You captivate me No one else can Satisfy me Like you do Oh God Like you do Oh God Would you put your hands together? Come on.
Just give him praise. Hey, we praise you, Jesus. The blood will never lose its power. The blood will never lose. It will never lose. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. I'm 18 years old, but I know how to have revival. Whew. I'm ready to go. Psalm 9, verses 1 and 2 says, I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all the marvelous things you have done. I will be filled with joy because of you. I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. Will you just worship him right now in this place? It's 8.30 a.m., and God is already moving. We praise you, Jesus. Welcome to the Fort Mill Church of God. We're so happy to have you. Please worship with us this morning.
are you, Lord? We bless the name of Jesus in this place. The word declares that God has given him a name above every name and that at that name every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. And so here's the thing. I'm, I'm a middle child and so word is that sometimes we might be headstrong, deliberately um, non-compliant and we like to chart our own course. I had an older brother who was perfect, I have a younger sister who is loving and thoughtful and compassionate, and I just was the kid who helped my parents learn how to be parents. <laughs> You'll get that on the way home. And so one of the problems that a kid like me has is that I like to exhaust every option before picking the best option. I just like to make sure that I didn't miss something really good on the way to what is great. But with life, it, it gets tricky if we, if we press through the wrong door too many times, it gets so heavy on us. But if we can just acknowledge what the scripture declares, that Jesus is where it is, and go after him, and follow after him, and find that in him is the refuge that we need, then life goes better, our hearts manage better, and our path is better. And so we declare in this place today that there is no name above the name Jesus. And so we bless him because we recognize that there is power in his name. And so for whatever it is that you need, press into Jesus today and let his power be the power that transforms you, that changes you, and that makes you into who he's designed you to be. Amen. We will bless the name of Jesus. Sing it with us. Where two or more are gathered. Where two or more are gathered in His name. He is. He is there. Oh. For all who come, who run to Him in faith. He is. He is. He is there. Let's declare this together. There is power in the name.
and there is power in the name of Jesus. Praise your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks for who you are to us, for all that you give us, for all that you do for us. You are our forever king.
Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, we can stand strong in the power of our God. In this place today, Lord, we declare that you are God and God alone. And that there is no God beside you. There is no God above you. You are God alone. And so we magnify you in this place. Our prayer, Lord, is that your kingdom will come and your will be done to the glory of Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the people of God said, Amen. Before you see to greet someone around you, let them know that you're glad to see them in God's house today. Sunday morning to you. You look great on a beautiful day to worship the Lord. I'm glad you're here. I sense the presence of the Lord and I almost leaned over to the preacher and said, if you're not ready, I am. It wouldn't take much. You get to talking about a risen Savior. You get to talking about a name that's above every name that has all power and all authority. You'll get me going and I'll be glad to preach. I'll do it at the drop of a hat and I'll drop the hat. I'm glad you're here today, glad you're worshiping the Lord with us. Today, we continue our revival as we have concluded our 21 days of prayer and fasting. I sent a picture to the group this morning. I was up at six o'clock eating a piece of cake. I don't know what you were doing. I went to a wedding on Friday. I performed a ceremony on Friday for Joe Culp and his new wife, Rita. and. Uh, they served cake and I couldn't eat it. I said, put it in a box, Sunday's coming. And about 6.30 this morning, I'm drinking coffee and I'm eating cake. It's a good morning for me, I don't know about you. At the conclusion of our 21 days, it's not only a tradition, but I think it's a important process, part of the process, that we end a time of fasting and prayer with a time of revival. And we are, blessed this weekend to have with us such a great speaker of the Word of God, one of my friends, William Lee. And I read his bio last night, and I'd like to do the same this morning. Many of you could not be here last night, and so I kind of want all of us to know and understand who we have with us today and, and the caliber of, of this man and, and what God is doing in his life. William Lee graduated in 1985 from Lee University in Cleveland, Tennessee with a Bachelor's of Biblical Studies with an emphasis on pastoral ministry. He's worked towards a Master of Divinity at Pittsburgh Theological Seminary in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and the Pentecostal Theological Center in Cleveland, Tennessee. He has served as pastor in Providence, Rhode Island, Baltimore, Maryland, Daytona Beach, Florida, and on the island of Bermuda. His evangelistic ministry has reached throughout the United States, Canada, the West Indies, Europe, South Africa, Singapore, India, United Emirates, as well as Australia. He's also been a guest speaker on Daystar Television and spoke at our General Assembly for the Church of God in 1998. In 1998, he founded Lee Ministries International Incorporated. He serves as a mentor and teacher for many young ministers in the kingdom of God. His wife, Sheila Renee Mabane of Washington, she'll be with us in the next service. Together, they are sold out to a life of servanthood is the vision of this ministry to continue to evangelize the world for the Lord Jesus Christ and to prepare the next generation to be effective and powerful citizens in the kingdom of God. 2014, Reverend Lee authored and published All the King's Men, the Chronicles in the Life of King David. He has a table out in the foyer. You'd be super blessed to stop by and purchase a product, take it home with you today. But we have with us, I think, one of the great speakers of our time and this moment, this season. Right now, he currently serves in the role as international revivalist and uh, an urban consultant and urban church consultant. I, I don't know about you, but I, the words international revivalist just ring true in my heart today because the world needs revival. And it comes from many different ways and in many different fashions. But there are voices like Bill Lee who will 
be able to go to places you can't go that I can't go. May not ever have the opportunity to go, but he will go and he will reach people all across the world. He's well known and well received throughout the world. And so we have him with us today. So would you stand with me and give a nice warm welcome this morning to our guest, Bishop William Lee. We're glad to have you, Bishop. You can be seated. Thank you for welcoming him. And tonight, I won't go through all of that. We'll get the mic to him as quick as we can. But I, I wanted as many of you to know that we're blessed to have him with us today. It's an honor. You're my friend, and I'm glad to share the pulpit with you. You're an anointed man of God. I want to pray and ask the Lord to bless you. So as you give today, give your tithe and your offering and honor the Fort Mill Church of God. You're pouring into the storehouse. That's what we do. But then I ask you to consider an additional gift and just mark on an envelope. Uh, revival or speaker and that money will go towards our speaker and the ministry that he has that will literally take him around the world so as you invest today invest big for the kingdom of God Lord we love you and we thank you for the privilege to be a part of the body of Christ and that we share with those evangelists and teachers and preachers that can make a difference around the world we're so thankful that you called us to many different places and to do many different things. And because of that, the body of Christ reaches far and wide and it makes an impact for your kingdom and for your glory. And so today, as we give and invest in the kingdom of God through your servant, Bill Lee, I pray a special blessing on this offering and a special blessing on your people. As we share what we have, I pray you multiply it and do great and mighty things with it for your glory and for your name. Bless your people according to your word as they are faithful servants. They understand the spirit of generosity and they are faithful givers to the kingdom of God right here at Fort Mill. Be with them according to your word, I pray in Jesus' name. If you'll turn your attentions to the screen and the choir will come back around in just a moment to sing. And uh, we'll continue. Good morning service. and welcome to the Fort Mill Church of God. We are so glad that you chose to join us for worship this morning. Young at Heart will have their monthly dinner this coming Saturday at 4.30 in the lobby of the Center for Discipleship Building. They will be celebrating Valentine's Day. Please be sure to bring a side item or dessert to share and the chicken will be provided. Everyone is invited to attend. And thank you for your consistent and generous support of our food pantry, which helps bless local families in need. You can join the Boy Scouts food drive on February the 2nd by dropping off canned goods. Please stop by the Connect Desk for more information. The Sounds of Praise Choir will have open enrollment during the month of February. Applications will be accepted through February 24th. If you feel called to be a part of this ministry, don't put it off. The next enrollment won't be until August of 2019. Please contact Annette Waldrop in the church office to request an application and receive more details. Her contact information is located on the screen and in your bulletin. The next Grow Track for membership will begin next Sunday. During this four-week class, you will better understand the heart, mission, and vision of our church and the part you play to accomplish God's plan for our community. The class will take place during the Connect Hour on Sundays. Please see Pastor Holly with any questions. And if you're married or engaged, make plans now to be a part of the XO Marriage Conference that will take place on February 8th and 9th. This is a two-day simulcast experience that will provide expert marriage advice and practical teachings to help couples navigate their marriage journey. The cost is $30 a couple and childcare will be provided. We hope that you will be able to be with us tonight for our revival service as we finish up our 21 days of prayer and fasting. The service will begin at 6 p.m. and it will be a great night of worship. We hope to see you there. And staying connected with you is important to us and one way we can do that is through our connection books. Let us know you're here by signing in each week and if you have a need that you would like for us to pray about, there's a prayer card for you to let us know. You can also check in on the FMCOG app. And if today is your first time with us, one of our staff pastors would love to meet and greet you back at Connection Central at the conclusion of the service. Again, we are so glad that you chose to be a part of the Fort Mill Church of God, where we connect with God, our friends, and the world. shepherd I 
it shall not want. In green pastures he makes me lie down. He restores my soul and leads me on for his name, for his great name. Surely goodness, surely mercy, right beside me all my days, and I will dwell in your house forever, and bless your home. of my enemy Though the arrow flies and the terror of night is at my door I'll trust you Oh
Can we lift our hands all over this house? Thank you, God. Thank you for being our shepherd. Thank you that you surround us with your grace. Thank you that you watch over us. Thank you that you protect us even from ourselves. Thank you for goodness and mercy that follows us. We thank you for what the songwriter called your reckless love that pursues us, that arrests us when we have gotten off track. So as we share your word this morning, we pray that you would remind somebody today the depth of love that you have for us. We ask you to minister right now, Father, for those fugitives that are running from your purpose and your will. Touch your servant as I share your word. Let your Holy Spirit, God, do what you intend to do. Like that shepherd that finds that lost sheep, bring somebody back in line with your will. And we will give you praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said, can we put our hands together? Let's give Jesus a big hand clap of praise this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is anybody blessed to be in this house this morning? All right, that's about two or three of you. Is anybody else blessed to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Let me give honor again to a Pastor Mark. We appreciate you and thank God for this time of sharing uh, with the people of God and thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Um, one of the things that I am blessed when it comes to being able to travel is not just the opportunity to be in services, but also the opportunity to fellowship. Amen. And I thank you for the time of fellowship we have just enjoyed, uh, getting to know you a little bit better and thank God for what God is doing in this ministry and doing in your lives. And again, I just believe the best is yet to come. Amen. For Fort Mill. Does anybody believe that this morning? Amen. Would you turn to somebody and tell them you ain't seen nothing yet? Amen. Hallelujah. The book of Jonah. We want to focus our attention on this morning, chapter one. I'm going to be reading actually a few verses from three different chapters in this book. If you will follow me this morning, I believe that God has a word for some Jonas this morning. Amen. Some who have been on the run. Amen. And God sent me from Cleveland, Tennessee with a warrant, warrant for your arrest this morning. Amen. Jonah chapter one. We're going to look at verses one through seven. That chapter, then we're going to go down to the 15th verse and into chapter 2, verse number 1, and also chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Beginning at verse number 1, of chapter 1, it reads, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paved the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said every one to his fellows, Come, and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then down to verse number 15 into the second chapter, verse number one, it reads, So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God, out of the fish's belly. And then down to chapter 3, verse number 1, it reads, And the word of the Lord 
came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Verse number one of chapter one reads and says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. And then in chapter three, verse number one, the scripture says, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. From my title this morning, I want you to turn to the person that is sitting next to you. And you know how we do that little thing we do when we're signaling for somebody to call us? Just put your little finger up by your ear and say, neighbor, can you hear me now? Amen. <laughs> and that is the title of my message this morning. I want to speak to you on the subject, can you hear me now? Or for a subtitle, a second word. I'm sure that most of us can recall that commercial that became one of the most popular and clever advertisements that helped to usher in the birth and the expansion of the cellular era. The commercial was sponsored by Verizon and has a man that is posing as a technician as he is testing the range and ability of their cellular service by simply taking a few steps and asking over and over again the question, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Now I'm sure that all of us at one time or another, we have uttered that question whether we were driving, walking, and even sitting due to the uncertain and constantly changing range of our cellular service. I'm sure that every one of us in the house, at one time or another, have experienced the frustration and the pain of the dreaded drop call. Now, I don't know about you this morning, but for me, it would seem as though that about the time I'm getting down to the juice of the conversation, or right when I'm in the middle of finally solving that problem with that customer service agent, or right when I'm in the center or the middle of writing down that phone number that I'm going to need later on, it seems as though that about that time I began to hear that familiar fading in and out sound. And then as I'm praying that I'm coming back into the service area, I utter those familiar words, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? And then, of course, there's silence. I pick up the cell phone and I press the redial button. And while I'm redialing them, they are redialing me, so we both end up getting each other's voicemail. But it causes us to experience a type of frustration that makes you even long for the good old days when the phone was connected into the wall. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Well, if you can imagine that type of frustration, then you can begin to imagine to a small degree the frustration of a loving God who is constantly giving orders to his children who have a tendency to venture to places in which we cannot hear him and be obedient to what he is trying to say. You see, I found out that although God allows us to go through seasons of silence, I found out that the God that we serve is constantly wanting and even engaging in communication to you and I on a daily basis. You see, the prop, you see God speaks to us in both simple as well as unusual ways. He speaks to us through his word. He speaks to us through the voice of his prophets. He speaks through signs and symbols and even our personal experiences. And if you're really, really spiritual, he might even speak through your husband or your wife. Come on and say amen. <laughs> but you see, the problem is not that God is not speaking, but the problem is is that many times we're unable to hear what he is saying 
because we find ourselves wandering off and even running to places in which we're not able and willing to hear him and be obedient to what he is telling us to do. And then when we are in places in which we can hear him, Oftentimes, we engage God in communication games that are eerily similar to the technology packages that come equipped with our phone service. God is speaking. But you know, we have our spiritual phones on call waiting. And we just say, have God on hold while we go ahead and do whatever it is we feel like doing. God is speaking. But we have our spiritual phones on call forwarding. Because the message the preacher is preaching can't possibly be for me. As a matter of fact, it's for brother so-and-so and and sister so-and-so who's sitting on the other side of the church. God is speaking. But you know, we looked down and we saw God's name come up on the caller ID. So we shifted him over to our voicemail and we said, God, I'm kind of busy right now, but please leave your name and your number and I'll get back to you the next time I find myself in serious trouble. God is speaking. But sometimes our hearts have become so cluttered by the cares of this life, amen, and our ears are unable to hear him above all of the noise, so we're not able to get what God is saying. But because he loves us and because he desires to have fellowship with us, God is loving and merciful enough to allow us to go through certain things, to walk through certain valleys, to go through certain trials until we reach that point at which we become desperate to hear a word from the Lord. Lord and when he speaks again he says son or daughter are you ready to hear my voice son or daughter have you learned your lesson son or daughter can you hear me now and that is exactly what Jonah is about to find out as we come to our chosen portions of scripture found in the book of Jonah the book of Jonah It falls into a category of books that are known as the minor prophets. And Jonah was the fifth of such books. And it focuses upon the events that took place in the life of the prophet by which which this book is named. Now, although this book is called a minor prophetic book, it is actually a book that possesses a major message. As a matter of fact, the message of this book was so profound and powerful that Jesus, many years later, would refer to this book when talking about his own experience. For he declared that just as sure as Jonah was in the belly of the whale for the fish for three days and nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the earth. But he said, I guarantee you that I shall rise again. Somebody shall praise the Lord in here. Now this book... It also shows us how deep the divine mercy of God is towards sinners and that God was willing to show mercy to a wicked nation. It also shows us one of the profound truths found in the pages of scripture and that is that God is so awesome and powerful that he is even able to use people who do not want to be used by him. Jonah was literally driven to Nineveh against his will but yet God would use his message to bring revival to the Assyrians. However, in our message this morning, we want to focus on how God, after speaking to Jonah concerning his assignment, would use certain things to bring this fleeing fugitive who was running from the call of God and line him up with his will. And I want to share with you some things that I believe God uses when he is wanting to get our attention. Turn to somebody and tell them God wants your attention. The first thing that I believe that God uses when he is wanting to line us up with his will and get our attention, number one, is God will use a storm. A storm. You see, storms in and of themselves... They are literally part of the journey of life and a vital part of the Christian journey. Storms are unavoidable. I don't care who you are, how spiritual you are, how much you pray, every single one of us at some times in our lives will have to go through the storm. 
A number of years ago, there came a teaching among the charismatics and even in the Pentecostal churches where people were preaching to people and telling them that if you line yourself up with the will of God and you become faithful enough and have a level of faith and anointed enough, it will exempt you from having to go through the storm. But help, let me help you to understand, I don't care how spiritual you are, how good you live, how blessed you are, everybody has to go through the storms. You can speak in tongues, you can pray in the Holy Ghost, you can do the seven steps of faith, you can turn around in circles, amen, and anoint yourself with oil, and when you're done, God will say that was cute, but you still have to go through the storm. Mm. H. Beecher Hicks has said that in life we find ourselves in one of three places. We are either in a storm, coming out of a storm, or on our way to a storm. But regardless of who we are, all of us in the house have to face the storms of life. However, there are some storms that from time to time we find ourselves in that are what I call unnecessary storms. Here's where the church gets quiet. <laughs> These are storms that we find ourselves going through that are the direct result of our being disobedient to the will, the word, and the voice of Almighty God. You see, there are some people in this house right now who are going through difficulties because it is the natural course of life. There are some right now who are going through trouble because there are people in your life that are causing trouble. There are some here today that are going through trouble because you're standing on the eve of a breakthrough and the devil is fighting you with everything that he has because he knows that you're about to be blessed. But on the other hand, there are some of us who are going through trouble and storms because we caused them. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me this morning, but it's okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, you see, there are some storms that we are going through that we have nobody to blame but the person in the mirror. My God, we knew it was against the will of God and the word of God, and we decided to do it anyway. We were the ones who decided to flee, feed and sow to our flesh, and now we are reaping a whirlwind. We're the one that ran up that credit card, and now the bill callers are calling us. We're the one that got hooked up with that credit crowd that everybody warned you about and now you're standing there in trouble. We're the one that decided to buy that house or that car that we knew we could not afford. We're the one that got hooked up, amen, with that person and we knew that we were unequally yoked. We're the person that decided to move in before they put a ring on it and now we find ourselves going through all kinds of hell and all in trouble and we got nobody to blame but us. Can't blame the devil for this one. And you know, we in the church, we love to blame the devil for everything. The devil made me late to church. church. The devil made me cuss out my boss. The devil made me do this. The devil made me do that. And sometimes it wasn't the devil, it was just us. Kind of reminds me of the story that I heard about one day the devil was sitting on the curb, you know, and, and he was crying, you know. So the angel came by and saw the devil crying. He said, well, hey man, devil, is, is that you? He said, yeah, it, it's me. He said, yo, what, what, what you crying about? You know. He said, well, Brother Jones, about two blocks from here, he committed adultery. And the folk are over there trying to blame me. <laughs> and the angel said, you know, I mean, you are the devil. You know, I mean, if Brother Jones committed adultery, I'm sure you had something to do with it. The devil looked up and said, something to do with it. He said, I didn't even know Brother Jones was married. <laughs> <laughs> 
You see, sometimes we want to blame everybody uh -huh, but ourselves. Amen. But sometimes we just got to reach a point where we look ourselves in the mirror and look up to God and say, God, I'm going through this because I simply caused it and I need you to have mercy on me. It's not my brother. It's not my sister. But it's me, oh Lord. And I'm standing in the need of prayer. We simply got to own it. Come on and say amen in the house. And Jonah here in our text, he was about to experience what I call an unnecessary storm. Look what the word of God says again. Verse number one, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai. Notice, it came straight to Jonah. It was a direct word. It was a clear word. He didn't get the word when he opened up a fortune cookie at the Chinese restaurant. He did not get the word off a of $1-800 witch. He did not get it from the parking lot prophet. It is a clear, direct word. Jonah, get yourself up. Go down to Nineveh and preach against that city because their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah hears what God says and said, look, God, I'm going to do my own thing. Now listen, Jonah had a reason for this because according to historians, Nineveh was one of the most wicked cities of their day. Some of the greatest atrocities performed against the people of God happened in Nineveh. So God is telling Jonah to get up and go down to a very dangerous, wicked city. But Jonah said, look, I ain't trying to hear that. Let me just make my own plan. So the Bible says in verse number three that Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So Jonah said, God, I am not going to Nineveh. I am going to Tarshish and I'm going to get on this boat and I am going uh, uh, to, for, I'm sorry, he went down to Joppa and said, I'm going to get on this boat and I'm going down to, to, to Tarshish. Very interesting. The name Joppa means beautiful. The name Tarshish means established. So God says, go to the dangerous place. But Jonah said, nah, I'm going to the place that's both beautiful and established. But what Jonah did not realize is that even a beautiful and established place becomes ugly and unstable if God's not there. Oh, listen to me. I'd rather go to a dangerous place with God than go to a beautiful place without him. Do you hear me? I'd rather go to an unstable place with God than go to an established place without him. Glory to God. I'd rather, sit, I'd rather go through a valley with God than stand on a mountain without him. I'd rather walk through hell with God than sit on a beach without him. I'd rather have rainy days with God than sit in the sunshine without him. I'd rather work like a slave with God than go on vacation without him because I know that everywhere God is, that everything is going to be all right. Glory to God, I want to be where the Lord is. <laughs> but Jonah said, no, I'm going down to Joppa and I'm going to Tarshish to try to flee from the presence of God. Can I tell you what I found out, church? I found out that the cost to flee from the presence of God begins with a simple fare, but ends up with a costly journey. The Bible says he found the ship, reached in his pocket, and paid the fare thereof one payment and a big cost $15 to get into the club and a lifetime of misery caused by the person that you met $10 for the pornographic video that led to the lust problem that ruined your family $10 for the joint that introduced you to the drug habit that tore your life apart $15 for the first drink that led to your alcoholism. $100 for the hotel room that led to the unwanted pregnancy. One moment of gossip that ruined a person's reputation. One moment of pleasure in a lifetime of diseases. A simple fare 
to try to flee from the presence and the call of God ended up getting Jonah in all kinds of trouble and I don't know who I'm talking to right now but I've come by to tell you amen do not pay the fare turn to your neighbor and tell him don't you pay that fare that's right, everything that glitters is not gold. Everything that looks good ain't good for you. Amen, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But thank God the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jonah paid the fare and now he's about to pay the price. God says, all right, Jonah. I told you to do what I told you to do and you wanna do your own thing, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna send a storm. Verse number four, but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was light to be broken. You see, that ship represented the thing that Jonah thought that he could run into to flee from the presence of God. But God said, I'm gonna send a storm and the nature of this storm is going to be so powerful that it is going to take that thing you thought you could run into and break up that ship. I found out that when he really wants to get my attention, that he specializes in breaking up my ships. Somebody, you walked away from God for a friendship, and God walked in and he broke it up. Somebody left God for a relationship, and God just walked in and he just broke it up. You are looking for love in all the wrong places, trying to find yourself some companionship. And God just walked in and he just broke it up. Oh, you put sports in front of God, trying to win yourself a championship. And God just walked in and he just broke it up. My God, you left home and did your own thing because God had blessed you with a scholarship and you just walked and God just walked in and he just broke it up. Glory to God, I found out that he'll break up, amen, positions of leadership. He'll break up kinship. He'll break up partnerships. Whatever ship he has to break up, God will send the kind of storm that will break up our ship until we decide that we're going to yield to his voice and and do what God has called us to do. While nobody likes to go through a storm, amen, nobody likes to go through those problems. You know what I'm thankful for? I'm thankful that he loved me enough to send the perfect storm so that I could line up with his will and do what he has called me to do. Glory to God. And I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but perhaps you have gone through all kinds of storms that you got to admit that you created yourself. Can I tell you why? It is because God loves you so much that he is trying to line you up with his will that we he might be a blessing unto him so thank God for the perfect storm but then the second thing that God will use is not only will God use a storm but number two God will use people how many of you love people alright some of y'all didn't raise your hand you just need to get saved okay <laughs> Because if you say you love God, you have to love people. And I love people, all kinds of people. I don't have a problem getting along with just about everybody. And I thank God for people. And as a matter of fact, I come to realize that God loves me so much and is so interested in my development that from time to time, he brings people into my life. Have people walk out of my life but he brings certain people into my life at certain moments in order that they might be used as an instrument to spark something in me, to push me to the next level. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Is anybody thankful to God for those people that he brought into your life at certain moments to speak a word into your life? Amen. To tap into something that you did not even know was there yourself to help to push you to the next level. But here's the problem. Oftentimes when God blesses us with people and those relationships, we have a tendency to get them out of their proper place. We reach a point where we start putting people 
before our relationship with God. When we get in trouble, instead of getting in our prayer closet and calling on God, we pick up the phone and call our friend. We become more concerned about their opinion and how they feel about it than we are about what God has to say about it. So we become people pleasers and people get out of order and out of priority in our life. So what God does when we get that way is God has people start behaving like people. Because as much as I love people, I've come to find out that people are strange. <laughs> now, I know you don't have these kind of people in Fort Mill, South Carolina, but let me just talk about the places I've been. People are fickle. They'll be with you one minute and gone the next minute. They'll be smiling at you on Sunday and talking about you on Sunday afternoon. I'm, I'm, I'm just talking about where I come from. I don't know, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you don't have these people around here because everybody here is wonderful and blessed and anointed and ready for heaven. But where I come from, there are some strange people. The kind of people that will say that they're with you and they love you and that they love the church and the ministry and that God sent them there. And then as soon as you make a decision they don't like, all of a sudden God has changed his mind. <laughs> the kind of folk that will stand before the whole church all dressed up and say that they're going to love you till death do you part. And as soon as you burn the toast or gain some weight, all of a sudden they're... <laughs> People are strange and the sad truth of the matter is is that a lot of times in the church we become so blinded by people that we actually allow their actions and behavior to affect our relationship with God isn't it funny how God can be so faithful how God can be there for us all the time and then some fickle fleshly human being offends us and we walk away from God, the church, and our calling because of what people did. Isn't this strange? A man falls and we fall as if somehow their actions change who God is. Can I help somebody this morning? As a matter of fact, I need to give you all a revelation this morning that is going to help you to never allow people to affect your destiny again. Are y'all with me? Okay, you might want to write this down because this is deep. As a matter of fact, I got this from T.D. Jakes. He, 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 he shared this with us one time when he was preaching, and I wrote it down because I realized that if I can just get this, it'll never, and it'll cause me to never let people affect my relationship with God again. Y'all ready? It's just three words. People are crazy. Okay, just, just write it down, okay? Yeah. All right, amen, that's right. It's, people are crazy. Listen, as much as I love people, the truth of the matter is, is that everybody in this house has some craziness going on on the inside of them. Look, look at that person sitting next to you, okay? All right, look at them all dressed up and wonderful. They got their hair done and the makeup, and they're just wonderful. They look handsome and pretty and all that stuff. But listen, there is some craziness on the inside of each and every one of them. And don't look at them too funny because they're looking at you thinking the very same thing. Hey, Amen. There is some craziness on the inside. Hey, Amen. Turn to your neighbor. Tell them I love you, but you sure are crazy sometimes. Y'all don't. Y'all know it's true. Y'all know it's true. Amen. Even us preachers, as nice as we are, I wise will tell you that there is some craziness on the inside of us. As a matter of fact, that's why we're in church, because we're trying to connect with this God to keep some of that craziness under control. Stop thinking that folk in the church are going to be perfect. This is a hospital for messed up people who are toe up from the flow up that are trying to get to God. Everybody in here has a problem that's called sin. 
and we will mess up from time to time. We will disappoint you from time to time. We will do stuff that will leave you shaking your head and knowing that folk are crazy. You say, why do I need to know that? And why does that not, why would that not affect my destiny? It, it is the reason is this. When people act like people, you just look over at them and say, hey, I knew they were crazy anyway, so I'm just going to keep on serving this God who is faithful, that loves me, who is always the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I'm going to lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. So God says, hey, Jonah, I spoke and you didn't listen. So I'm going to have people act like people to help you line up. The Bible says in verse number five that there came the storm and the ship was like to be broken and everybody starts running around casting off their wares on the ship. The Bible says that Jonah, the person who caused the problem, was down in the ship sleeping. If you don't think people are crazy. <laughs> Anybody ever have somebody cause problems in your life and you're there sweating and praying and trying to get through and they're down in the Bahamas, <laughs> sitting on the beach, drinking a drink with an umbrella in it, not even thinking about you and what they did? Listen, that's what happened. They're trying to bring the ship under control and Jonah has the nerve to be sleeping. So God says, okay, I'm going to use the people. The Bible says the shipmasters were afraid and cried every man to his God. Amen. And the Bible says they came to Jonah and woke him up and said, hey, what are you doing? What meanest thou, O sleeper? In other words, what's up with you? They began to talk to Jonah and Jonah identified himself and they realized that he was the cause of the problem. So the Bible says that they took Jonah and threw Jonah overboard. Isn't it funny? He gets on the ship trying to fit in, running from God. And the very group that he tried to fit in, when they got in trouble, threw him overboard. And some of y'all know exactly what I'm talking about because you compromised and folk used you. And you did everything you could do to try to fit in. And after they got what they want, they threw you overboard. After you compromised your faith, they threw you overboard. After you gave your body to the wrong person, they threw you overboard. After you engaged in stuff that you never dreamed you would engage in, they threw you overboard. But you know what I love about this God, hallelujah, is that even after I'm disobedient to him, even after I spit in his face, if you will, even after I offend his laws, he's still standing there with outstretched arms saying, hey son, you can always come back home. I love you just like you are. I know that people have thrown you overboard but I'm still standing here and you can always come back into my arms I still love you and I'm willing to welcome you home and then the final thing that God uses number three God will use a fish a fish the Bible says in verse 17, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. The fish represents the thing that God uses in pursuit of us that takes us to a place called breaking point. And I don't care how strong we are, how connected we are, everybody has a breaking point. Breaking point. I'm talking about that place where you have gone through so much that you look up to God and say, God, I can't take another trial. I can't take another storm. And what God will do is God will use a breaking point to bring us to that place where our will is broken and his will becomes our will. And that's what's about to happen Jonah, to Jonah. The fish swallows up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days. And look what the Bible says in chapter 2, verse number 1. It says, then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God. Isn't it something? Verse 1, God is speaking to Jonah. The storm comes. People turn on him. The fish swallow him up. And now all of a sudden, 
Jonah is talking to God. Isn't it funny how God can turn things around? Isn't it funny how when we were running from him, we didn't want him, but now all of a sudden, after we have gone through what we go through, we realize that there's nobody like our God, and we just want him more and want him more. And the Bible says that God spoke to the fish and commanded the fish to spit Jonah up on the shore. I come out and tell somebody, I know you've been running, but God is about to speak to the fish, the very thing that brought you to breaking point. God is about to say, enough is enough. I'm going to release my child to do my will hallelujah thank God for his mercy that endures forever and now after spitting Jonah up on shore the Bible says that God cleared his throat hallelujah and said Jonah I spoke to you the first time you did not hear me I sent the storm I used people I had the fish swallow you up and now Jonah I'm about to speak to you again the Bible says the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time God says Jonah I'm about to speak to you Jonah are you ready to hear my voice Jonah are you ready to be obedient Jonah can you hear me now but this time instead of running oh Jonah lifted up his hands and said yes Lord I hear you somebody lift your hands and say yes Lord I hear you Lord I'm ready to do your will I'm ready to be obedient I'm ready to do what you tell me to do glory to God and Jonah became obedient to God let me show you how obedient he became the Bible says where the fish spit Jonah up was a three day journey to Nineveh but oh Jonah became so obedient that the Bible says he made a three day journey in one day (laughs) glory to God would you turn to somebody and tell him I'm doing triple time Yes, I'm doing triple time. That's why I praise him, because I'm doing triple time. That's why I glorify him, because I'm doing triple time. That's why I give, because I'm doing triple time. That's why I fast and pray, because I'm doing triple time. I want to be three times obedient to my God, and I want to give him three times the praise, because I found out that when the praises go up, glory to God, the blessings are going to come down. Hallelujah. I'm being obedient to his will. I hear you now. Stand with me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Lift those hands now, Father. Thank you for your grace. (laughs) Thank you for pursuing us. Thank you for loving us in spite of our disobedience. Thank you for your mercy that endureth forever. Father, there's some Jonas in the house this morning that you sent me by to speak to. And one more time, I ask that that mercy and grace would be extended to your sons and daughters. I pray, Father, for that fugitive going through the storm speak peace now people forsaking them and wounding them time after time because we put the wrong trust in the wrong people help us today to prioritize and make you first now God we need you to speak to the fish today and line us up with your purpose we give you praise. In Jesus' name, with every eye closed, every head bowed. I want to pray for some Jonas this morning. First of all, you might be the kind of, and there's some different types of Jonas that I'm going to pray for this morning. First of all, if you are here and you do not know the Lord, you're not a Christian, or you once knew him and you've backslidden, or maybe you've just been coming to church time after time, people think that you're right but you know deep down inside you've been running I want to pray for you first Jonah would you like to receive this Lord that loves you that's pursuing after you this morning you like to be restored back to the faith can I pray for you slip your hand up real quick come on God is dealing with you where are you yes God bless you yes God bless you 
Where are you? Yes, God bless you. Somebody else. Somebody else. I need to be restored. I need to be renewed. Lift your hand up. Yes, God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yes, God bless you. Somebody else. There's another kind of Jonah I want to pray for this morning. You haven't left the church. You haven't left God. But you know that there's a call on your life. God gifted you and gave you the talent. I'm not just talking about the preach, but you know what God has placed in you to do. But because of certain things and doubts and questions and fear, you're in the church, but you're still running from your purpose. And today you decided, before I go through an unnecessary storm, before I have another brokenhearted experience, I'm yielding to his will. If I'm talking to you, would you lift your hand up so I can pray for you? Where are you? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Jonah number three. You used to be Jonah. You ran from God for a long time and now you surrendered. But here's the problem. While you were running, you sowed certain seeds that have affected your life today. And now you're entangled in some stuff that you just need God to untangle you so you can live better for him. Do you understand what I'm saying? You see, I found out that a moment of God's favor can make up for a lifetime of bad decisions. And there are some of you that just need to get untangled from stuff from your past. You just need his grace. You just need some favor. Can I tell you that he loves you so much that he's able to break some chains, to break some soul ties, and to free you so you can live better for him? Lift your hand up if I'm talking to you. I want to pray for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You who lifted your hands for any of these, come on, very quickly, just make your way to this altar right now. We're believing God for some favor. We're believing God for some breakthrough. Come on and give it to him. Come on and surrender to him. Step out. Come on. Come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're waiting. Yes, Lord. Today is my day. Come on. Bring your ministry. Bring that talent. Bring that gift. Today is my day for surrender. Step out. Step out. Step out. Today is my day for surrender. Yes, Lord. I hear you speaking to me, Lord. I want to do your will. Come on. God is dealing with more than these. I'm still waiting. I haven't received that release in my spirit. There are some of us that need to be here at this altar. God is dealing with you. Step out. Step out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He come to us Sunday to my day. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Julia, she come to us Sunday to my day. Thank you, Father. Come on. Come on. Our prayer team, come on and help me. Our prayer team, come on and help me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Today is your day. Today is your day. Step out. Come on. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bowed and drenched in tears. They laid him Yes. 
there's a lot of reasons to praise God. I'm going to let you go. Our connect groups are meeting, but I'll, there's a lot of reasons to praise God. But I think, obviously, the first one would be that he called me out the first time. I'm very thankful that there was that day where I sensed the nudge of the Holy Spirit, and he called me, and I, I moved to an altar of prayer and repented of my sin. That was the greatest call, of course. But I'm thankful for the time when I disobeyed and went my way that he called me again. And then when I blew it again, he chased me down again. And then when I blew it again, he chased me down again. And then when I blew it again, he chased me. I'm thankful for the multiple relentless love and grace and the call of God that just won't let me go. Hallelujah. What a powerful word to us this morning. Spoken into your hearts. I know you've been encouraged. A lot of hands were raised throughout our altar time. It, maybe you're a visitor today and some of this was all new to you. You don't know what just happened, but you like what you sensed in your spirit. You want more information about our church on the screen? It tells you what to do. You can shoot us a text message and someone will follow up with you. If you made a decision to follow Christ today, please let us know. There's somebody in the prayer room that'll be waiting for you. They'll be back there to welcome you and to greet you. And there's also a way you can let us know by sending us a text. Maybe you're not quite ready to talk about it yet because you're not sure all that just happened. It's okay, it's part of the journey. We'll walk with you. Let us by reaching out, shooting us a text and letting us know what God did in your life today. And if you're a guest, thanks for being here. Tonight at six o'clock, you got one more chance to hear another dynamic message. Be engaged in worship and hear the voice of the Lord speaking to you. If ever the church needed revival, we need it. And so I'm asking you to be here tonight. I'd love to fill the place up. I know you're busy. I know you start your work week back in the morning at 6 a.m. and the grind starts all over. But more than you need physical rest, I promise you need spiritual renewal and rest in our hearts. All of us do. And there's nothing more reviving. Nothing even, be it's better than a Sunday nap. I promise, being in the presence of God. I invite you to be back tonight at 6 p.m. Be here. Let's see what God wants to say to us. If you're a guest, stop by. Let me say hello to you. Our team is out there to welcome you today. We've got a gift for all of our guests. God bless you as you go. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you tonight at 6 o'clock. Life is for living.